Hi, it's Beverly Cole, and the, today we're going to be artists painting with embossing powder. We're using two sister sets, both available in rubber, but one we're going to use in digital form. This is the digital, digital set. I'm going to have trouble saying that today. And I made a background using the uh, ruffled peony, and this is my focal point. The set is available in so many colors digitally, and Donna Ellis did a beautiful job making these sets with these vintage images. I'm going to use the sentiment from this rubber sister set. And we're going to stamp that. But first we're going to make the card with this digital printout. I cut the background to size, four by five and a quarter. And now I'm cutting out my focal point with a pair of very sharp craft scissors. And I'm showing you how I cut this out because I don't poke holes to get into the inside areas. I cut through a place where the image has a line so it's not obvious and I cut very carefully. I'll show you here. I'm going to cut through and then go into that closed in area, even this tiny area and I cut it out oh so carefully. Now this is leaving some very delicate stems, but we're going to strengthen those in a minute. I just want to show you one more area cut out carefully the way I do it. No poking of holes because I find that when I poke holes it weakens the paper and sometimes will bend the paper and I I don't want bend marks in my image. So this is, to me, the simplest and most comfortable way to work when I'm cutting out an image. I'm one of those paper crafters who finds it therapeutic to cut. At Sparkle and Sprinkle, we do have cut files for your Cricut or your Silhouette or that type of machine. So if you're one of those crafters that doesn't enjoy cutting out, that's your option. There. Oh, one more spot. And get off all those little white edges. These really are beautiful images, and I'm a fan of vintage, so these are just great for me. Donna Ellis did a fantastic job. Well, this is going to be right here over the background. And it's already just breathtakingly beautiful. So now I'm going to take some dimensional glue. And this is how I'm going to strengthen my image so that when I go to manipulate it in a few minutes it will be flexible without breaking. I'm strengthening every little area. You can see right there how delicate that is. Strengthening these areas so that they will stay strong. I'm taking my time making sure and when this dries it's going to make those areas less likely to break when I ink the edges of them. Okay now put that aside and we're going to work on our background and as pretty as it already is when I made the background, I turned some of the uh, images as I put them into my word processing program. I turned them around so that they weren't all facing the same direction. But they're pretty evenly spaced. Now here I'm showing you that I'm using some blue ink that I have. A nice vintage blue color. 
and by going sliding my large sponge dauber from the glass to the card, I get a very smooth transition. No harsh edges. So this gives it a vintagey blue edge. You could make this look very vintage by using a, a brown color, but I just thought making this entirely blue, just, I was just so excited to do it. So now we're going to take the focal point. Wait, no. I think we're going to cut. Yes. This is the second image that I had printed on the same piece of cardstock, but my printer for some reason put a pink line through the middle of this flower. So instead of wasting it, and you know I don't like to throw anything out. You should see my craft room. I'll have to give you a tour. We're going to cut out the center part of the flower and I'm going to pop it on top of the focal point so that it gives it dimension. And to, speaking of dimension, we're going to ink the edges the same way we did the background. This piece is very sturdy because it doesn't have a lot of little pieces, uh, stems and leaves on the edges. So I can handle this one very easily. And you see here I'm using that same jumbo dollar to do all the little white edges. Now we'll do the same thing to the peony. It's not quite dry yet, but well, you get the idea. Yeah, that's how it's going to look. But I'm going to also now ink the edges of this image. And this is where that uh, reinforcement with the dimensional glue really comes in. I am holding it with my fingers, but also sometimes I tend to go a little quick. And it's better to just ink and hold have the strengthened reinforced edges so that it doesn't tear. If it tore, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But this way it, it didn't. Look how that pops. Isn't that beautiful? My goodness. Now that piece will be popped in the middle and I'm just looking to see where it fits. It's like a puzzle. And I think it would have looked pretty without the edges inked as well. Even without that piece, if you don't have a piece that you can cut like that. You could print one, but you don't really need it on this beautiful flower. You can see all that white area in the middle. It's just popping right out at us. I love it. Yeah, this is going to be one of my favorite stamps. And it's amazing how it fits right on that card. Just perfect. Now I'm going to attach this to the background with some strong adhesive. So you're going to want to use a liquid glue with a fine tip. If you're using a two-way glue, you have to work pretty quickly so that you can get it on there while it's wet. You know the kind of glue that we use for our glitter. The one that dries tacky. Well, this one we want to dry permanent, so make sure you use a glue that's going to hold. I use that little tip to go all the way around the edges. See how delicate. Somehow I believe that that little piece over there on the right would have pulled right off by now if I hadn't reinforced it. So pretty. And there we go. Now if you have a brayer, you could run it right across that. My hand seems to work just fine at this point, however, because I used plenty of glue. Now to pop this piece off, nope, no glue this time. I'm going to use some foam pads, and we have them in 
three different sizes. So these tiny ones, I could have used a jewel picker, I think, to put these on. I'm really fighting with it here because of my nails. I don't always have long nails. I'm not sure they work for me when it comes to my art. Yeah, these are the really tiny foam pads, and they are able to get into all those little edges, which is really fantastic for this image. When you put this through the mail, you know, sometimes when they go through the machine, it can really mess up your card. But if you have enough of these around the edges, it won't get squished. So I'm making sure I use plenty just to show you how these foam pads can really fit in those areas. And now I'm going to use our next size. And that fills that area in. I need one more little foam pad in this bottom right corner. And now I'll peel off the backs of all of those pieces. I tried using my tweezers, so that didn't work. So I got my paper piercer and that seemed to work just fine. If I didn't have those nails, I probably could have taken them off with my fingers. <laughs> One at a time, but they peel off really easily. And here's the uh, image put together. Now I'm taking the top off of a bottle of Stampendous embossing ink, which we have here at Sparkle and Sprinkle, and a paintbrush fine paintbrush. Because remember what I said, we're artists today and we're going to paint with embossing powder. I've had we have this beautiful sapphire color and of course when you emboss always use your static free bag so that the embossing powder won't stick to the other areas where you don't want it. Now taking in the paintbrush I'm just painting in these shadow areas of the blue. Being careful not to be too overzealous with the embossing ink because you can always add more but once you get it on there you can't really take it away so little at a time and I'm starting with the center of the flower and you can already see just with the uh, embossing ink the depth that we are going to obtain with this darker embossing powder so I dump it on and tap it off. You know the drill. Look how pretty that already looks. And then we heat emboss. Make sure you get every area. You don't have to you don't really have to wave your wand around. That way you'll make sure you hit all the areas of the embossing powder. Look at that, so pretty. And we'll do a little more. Notice I'm not outlining every image, but just very subtly adding where it's the darkest blue. and the shadows. Well, that's an easy one because it actually is a shadow that's created by that popping piece. So let's fill that in with some embossing as well. We're painting, painting with embossing powder. And I did another card that will be on the blog in April so that you can see another, yet yeah, a different card. And it's done on craft paper cardstock. And it's a stamped image, really pretty. So make sure you check that card out when I post it next month. I post on Tuesdays.
If you're enjoying this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and please leave me a comment. I would love to know what you think of this technique and I would hope that you'd give it a try and let me know how your card turns out. You can post it on our challenge blog or on our, on our company blog. If you have a problem, you can always call us. We're always available to answer your questions during our hours that we're open at the store. So here we have the embossed image painted with embossing powder. Okay, now we're going to move on and we're going to do more. So we do the same thing and notice that I worked from the middle out. And I don't know if you noticed when I was pressing the middle down before while I was talking, but when I heated that image, my little foam squares puffed up. But all I had to do was wait till the card cooled and then pressed it down and they worked just fine. However, if that concerns you, just move your heat tool in and out as you're emboss heat embossing and that will help to keep that from happening. One more time, sapphire embossing powder. So many beautiful colors. It's wonderful to have colors that match your artwork. And we heat emboss this one more time. And now back to our dimensional glue because we wouldn't be finished without some sparkle. So we're going to add some dimensional glue and glitter. It's all about the glitter, you know. Now I don't want this to be blue because these are highlights. I want these to stand out and pop. So first the dimensional glue, because that's gonna give us dimension. That's kind of obvious. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to use some really pretty starfire glitter. The name just suits this glitter. Tap it off. Already looks gorgeous, but when that glue dries, it's going to look perfect. Now, the sentiment. This is a piece of vellum, which I have used my anti-static pillow on, and the sentiment is so cute. Using uh, Versamark ink, and again, sapphire embossing powder. Dump it on. Tap it off. So pretty. Now we'll heat set this. And when you heat set on vellum, you want to move your heat tool in and out to keep it from warping. So you'll see me moving it in and out here. That keeps the heat from warping the piece of vellum. And it, and it embosses pretty quickly. You can see the color changing. And here I have bent it around the back of the card after trimming it down. And I'm going to use some of our terrific tape. This is quarter inch terrific tape. And I just place a piece underneath where the vellum goes around the back of the card. Because you know, vellum with glue, you can see the glue, you can see the tape. So you want to make sure you hide it on the back of your card. And look how pretty this looks. Now I'm going to find some cardstock to match from my stash. Whoops, <laughs> a little sticky there. So blue, 
Mm, but it needs something to help it pop from the blue background because of all the blue inking. So we're going to put a piece of white cardstock, simple white cardstock, as a frame, as a mat. And there's our card. Just perfect. Be sure to uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. And if you have any ideas, be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss a video. Have fun, guys.